May through August 1947 saw the first modern UFO wave in the United States. Odd lights, glistening circular machines, and reddish flying cigars captured the American imagination. Tiffany Thayer, the eccentric novelist and founder of the Fortean Society, named after Charles Fort, chortled over the Air Force explanations in the Society's journal, Doubt. Obviously, the government was determined to cover up the true facts in this new situation. That's from the chapter, The Flutter of Black Wings, in uh, The Mothman Prophecies, based on true events, a book by John A. Keel. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Stench of Truth. I'm happy to have the real star of the show here with us today. I don't know how long she will stay. Um, but uh, for all those who have asked, that is Matira. Uh, she's the latest addition to the family here. Uh, anyway, I just have a few comments. Uh, first of all, what the fuck is up with Verizon, uh, Communication Workers of America, I mean, and their strike. What, what's the deal with that? I mean, why go on strike for two weeks and get nothing out of it? The only thing they did was deprive their membership of two weeks worth of work. The only thing I can think of is that some kind of concession was made by management in order to ensure that collective bargaining actually continues in some fashion that's acceptable to the union. But if that's the case, why not make an announcement about that so that everybody can try to understand exactly why you would go on strike for nothing and then go back, back to work for nothing? Because they could have continued under the terms of the old agreement, apparently. Now, understand, when it comes to labor negotiations, oftentimes there are facts not in evidence. So there could be a lot of factors here that explain this. And maybe they damaged Verizon enough by causing problems with insulation services and things of this nature that uh, they forced some kind of capitulation when it comes to negotiating a new deal. I don't know. But unless we know what's going on, we have to all sit here and scratch our heads what the hell is going on with this. Who decided this and what was accomplished? Uh, the other thing is, of course, the idea of Lib uh, Libya and uh, Muammar Gaddafi. Uh, and I said right from the very beginning, in as much as there has been a lot of, uh, you know, little snibblings here and there ar ar around this entire affair with our illegal, unconstitutional war against Libya. And... I've been against the entire idea of intervention there, as you well know. I am completely anti-war, and I believe that the United States should not be engaged in any acts of war against any nation unless they directly attack us. We should have a defensive army. This should never be about preemption, and it should never be about going in and occupying other countries, but more on that in a moment. So, anyway, we have this situation where... Uh, you have this continuous bombing campaign and these uh, rebel uh, terrorists, basically, who want to oust Qaddafi. And uh, my prediction was that there would only be two outcomes to this, and that would be that uh, Qaddafi would either step down or he would be killed. Um, because one thing you can be certain of in the wake of Vietnam, the U.S. military will not walk away from any fight they have ever engaged in. Ever. Ever. That's why we will never leave Afghanistan. We will never leave Iraq. And now, we presumably will also be in Libya. Not to mention the at least other three or four countries that we are actively engaged in military actions against. So, and the exact disposition of Qaddafi is not known at this time, uh, whether he's dead, whether he has gone into hiding, whether he has fled, but uh, this pretty much has come to fruition, as I said it would. Um, so, there is this, I don't know, 
why is it that whenever something like this happens, even the people who were adamantly opposed to any U.S. intervention all jump on the bandwagon and talk about what a great thing it is. Now, after we've gone in there and bombed the shit out of everything and smashed the entire country to fucking smithereens, to ask someone who actually did good for his people, I'm not supporting his terrorist activities, and I'm not supporting any kind of oppression that he did, but in the main, he actually was doing things to try to help people in Libya. Um, was he a good guy? No, but who, who is? And there are a hell of a lot of things that this country does, well, in the name of the country, by the administration, that other countries around the world would be thoroughly justified in bombing us to fucking rubble if they had the means to do so. And how could we even approach any kind of response to that? Or say, well, how dare you? with our overreach. So, what do we have now? We have, you know, continuous other wars going on, and presumably now a partial occupation of Libya. At least we're going to send somebody in there. It may just be the crack team of business people that will rape them of every single stitch of wealth that they have, no matter what form it's in, so that they will now join the rest of Africa in uh, uh, poverty and despair. Um, because that's what Western capitalism, finance capital, does. It robs from the poor, enriches the rich, and leaves everybody devastated, except for the richest rich. Um, so I had commented before on a couple of other issues that I wanted to touch on lightly. And in light of what's going on in Libya, it highlights this fact a little bit more. A lot of people are concerned about what might be coming in the future in the way of World War III. And it's like I have pointed out before, we are already in World War III. We have been in World War III since at least 2001, since the invasion of Afghanistan. If you're thinking about two major powers coming together in a worldwide battle, and that's the measure by which you decide what's World War III, you're, you're mistaken. World War III is now, it's going on right now, it's been going on for years. It's only a question of time before more and more and more countries become involved. And then maybe, you know, in five years, eight years, whatever, you will see the kind of global conflagration that you think of when it comes to World War III. But we're in it now. And actually now is really the time that you need to stop it, because once that steamroller gets up, once a certain number of p uh, countries have been drawn into this fiasco, it'll be all that more difficult to stop. So, we already have World War III. We already have it. And when it comes to the New World Order, I have news for all of you too when it comes to the New World Order, okay? Something that maybe you haven't heard before from some of the other noted people, and I'll use that term loosely. Uh, we already have the New World Order. It's already here. It's been here for a long time. I'm telling you right now that the Union of Canada, the United States, and Mexico may be something that will come down the road. But that's not the New World Order. The European Union is not the New World Order. The New World Order is the corporate regime that is the financing force out of London, which has impregnated itself into every corner and crevice of this world. And what they are doing now is they are using the United States military as the military arm of corporate, corporate London, okay? And London is owned by the Crown. So, what does this mean? We are still under the auspices of the UK. But it is all being managed off the books by corporations 
and this is all descendants of the East India Trading Company. And all we are is we are corporate muscle. That's it. That's all we are. That's all we ever were. If we ever had any independence at all, which I highly doubt, it was only at the very beginning of this country. And that was quickly taken away. So understand something. The New World Order is already here. It's been here for a long ass time. The trappings that you continue to associate with the New World Order and how you're going to fight it and stop it is just bullshit. I'm sorry to tell you. The New World Order is here. It already won. There is no battle for you to win. It's already over. It's the City of London financial impregnation of everywhere in the world, controlling supply chains, controlling key nodes, controlling what needs to be controlled. You don't need to take over an entire country by force of arms and occupy it in order to control the supply chains coming out of that country. In some cases you need to do that because there is not sufficient infrastructure to enable you to take advantage of the supply chain in question. And this would be true in Afghanistan. Sometimes you have to remove someone who is a recalcitrant and not willing to cooperate with the New World Order scheme, and that would be what happened in Iraq, and presumably what will happen in Iran in the future. If there is a critical infrastructure or a critical supply chain network or a node somewhere that you can take over and control, and thus control the entire route of that supply chain, and thus control everything, then that's all you need to do. You don't need to control a country. You don't need to occupy it. So just because the United States is not occupied by UK soldiers doesn't mean we're not completely owned and our supply chains are not completely owned and used for the purposes of the furtherance of global empire under the auspices of corporate domination which is all descended from the East India Trading Company, which in the end is owned and chartered by the Crown. It's that simple. New World Order here. They won. Get over it. You can't stop anything. You can't fight it because it's over and done with. It's been over and done with for fucking years. And World War III, like Madge said, you're soaking in it. We're already in it now. That's why it's more important now, before the great mass of nations get embroiled in World War III, that this can be stopped. It's only now that you really have a chance. So if there's any kind of anti-war movement, they better kick it in gear. Because down the road, you're not going to have any kind of opportunity like you have today which is really, really small anyway. Just some thoughts for today. Thank you. Good night.